Hey guys, welcome to another video on Bharat and Germany. My name is Bharat and in this video, we have a special guest with us who is Harsh and he is doing his PhD in computer science. Now again, many people ask us questions about like, how is it to do a PhD in Germany and so on. And Harsh was kind enough to give us some time and we are going to now ask him the questions about it. Harsh, tell me a bit about yourself and then mm -hmm. we jump into our main questions. Hi Bharat, uh, thanks for basically talking to me and taking out the time. Uh, yeah, so my name is Harsh. I moved here in Germany to Bonn in 2015, uh, in 2015, July. I moved here for my PhD in computer science and I defended it this year. So it took a while. Uh, it took a while uh, for the Corona and like, other reasons, but yeah, overall, I've been here for now, like almost six years. And now I am working here as a consultant so after my PhD. That's very interesting. And like, how was your career path before that? Like, were you um, always thinking of like doing a PhD or was it like, okay, I just like landed into a PhD somehow? No, that was always like kind of a wish, like a long-term like plan. So I basically did my bachelor's and master's in India. I am from Ahmedabad in Gujarat. So I studied uh, my bachelor's in Ahmedabad. Then I went to SVNIT in Surat to pursue my master's. And then I was looking for some, uh, some other opportunities. Like, like uh, I tried applying to US, but then as you know, like the tuition fees and all this is like very expensive. And then I realized that there's also very good opportunities in Germany. And it has, if not more, at least equal weightage and quality in terms of US. I think it's also more. So there is a lot of prestigious universities here. And then you have the benefit of not having to pay tuition fees. And, and I think that was a wonderful opportunity. So I always wanted to do PhD. And yeah, that's how I kind of came up. Now, tell me, like, how does somebody start preparing for PhD? So how does the entire process look like? Because I think a broad idea that everybody has is, okay, there's a structured way of like doing it. You have mm -hmm. like three years, like, you know, PhD programs or something. But on the other hand, you sometimes have like these traditional PhDs where it can take a bit longer. So can you yeah. like tell us to an absolute beginner who has no idea about like how to apply for PhD in Germany, how does things work? So in terms of application, I think there are some standard processes that you follow. Like you could check up the, like for Germany, you could check up the DAAD website. So they have a lot of uh, postings and openings for PhDs and upcoming researchers. So you can find some sponsorship there or like a project that has been listed or there are some collaborations. Then the other way is like what a lot of people do is reach out to professors that you know or that you want to work with via emails or basically it's the equivalent of cold calling, uh, like with emails. What I did is particularly different that I already knew what I wanted to work in. So I finished my master's and then I wanted to work in, in basically somewhere uh, in the field of AI, but not like machine learning, but more into like the data, like data models and knowledge graphs and such. So I started Googling it. So basically I just went to Google and typed like PhD position in NLP or semantics or such such areas. And then uh, you basically just came through the results and like surprisingly you find a lot of projects. So there are in academics, uh, it, like professors uh, write grants and they win the grants and then they start projects on different uh, like domains. And in those projects you have openings. So you basically get hired as a PhD student. And these are posted as job postings on different websites. So if you Google, you can find them out and then you apply. So there is a whole list of the procedure, what you need to apply with. So you need to have like the standard process is you, you start with a CV, a letter of recommendation, uh, basically a statement of purpose, you know, like why do you want to do a, uh, yeah, why do you want to get into research and why specifically this group or like why this professor and so on. So I, I basically, I think applied to like six or seven uh, PhD positions in entire Europe. Three of them were in Germany. I think two of them were in, uh, in the Netherlands. One was in Delft, TU Delft. And so there were a couple of projects that were running and I tried to apply there. And finally I got through. So then you apply, there is a round of interviews. So it depends from the job posting to job posting. So each position has its own uh, like requirement. The one I got was a Marie Curie scholarship. So the project was a Marie Curie training and networking project. And there were six partners. So they were looking for like 15 PhD students and they were 
15 PhD positions throughout Europe in, in six different countries. Mm -hmm. So in Germany, I think there were like four or five. So that's how I applied. So basically just Google search. And so that helps when you know what you want to work in, right? That, yeah, that definitely makes sense. And this means like, have you also like come across some other like, you know, friends or students or something who went through the traditional part of like applying for PhD and stuff? Um, and yeah. like, what, like what kind of documents do they attach in the email or something or any tips or advice, like if you came across there? So when I moved here, so in my research group, there were a bunch of PhD students and some of them came from the more conservative approach, like from the DAD. Right. So you go to the DAD website, you search through their material, you search the positions, and then they have a like a list of applications, like documents. Mm -hmm. You apply via the website, and then they have like a stipend that you can like receive. So I think the application process is pretty standard. You go mm -hmm. with the updated version of your CV, your statement of purpose. So as I said before, like why do you want to pursue PhD? Why in a specific mm -hmm. field? Why at a particular university? So you have to kind of uh, market yourself a bit and you have to show that you're motivated. And if you have worked before, or let's say if you have done your master's thesis on a relevant topic, or if you have published or co-authored one paper or something, that helps. So that kinds of basically creates some credibility. Uh, so for the professor or the postdoc who is going to review your application. And then, so this is the first stage. So like, this is where you get the interviews and you know, like other rounds. So once they like you and they offer you, then there's like a whole facade of like, you know, paperwork that goes out there. You need to, you have your passports and degree certificates and you, you need to scan everything, but that you will be told by the particular professor or the, or the, um, or the HR department from the university that you get accepted in because they need that for the immigration and yeah. For the employment or like your contract your student registration mm -hmm. perfect um and like how like how is the salary and stuff generally because most of the students they also have this concern if i want mm -hmm. to like you know start my master's this phd or something i also need mm -hmm. to know like yeah how much do i earn so can you give us some numbers there so i mean i i, I moved here in 2015 so then it was like it depends on the nature of the project right so some projects have very lavish funding like the Marie Curie ITN project so where you basically have a hundred person so so in general you have this TVL uh, it's like a category in which you fit so if you're a student you are basically in a TVL 13 pay scale mm -hmm. and then it depends on the position so uh, you might get so back then some students would get 50 percent of TVL 13 mm -hmm. some would get 75 and if you are a Marie Curie fellow you get 100 percent so what that means is at 100%, you get 36,000 euros annually. That's gross. That's before taxes. At 100%? So tax, yeah. Okay. So tax is something like 2,100. Mm -hmm. But that's 100%. So then you can work your way down. So if it's 50%, you get half of that, like something like 1,200 or 1,400, because your tax also goes down, mm -hmm. your tax category. So it's enough. So as a student, it's enough. Uh, you can live in shared apartments or in dorms, and that will definitely cover your rent and your expenses. You don't need to worry about like your survival for sure. Does and that answer your question? I, yes, yes, Harsh. So I was just like um, kind of discussing, like as far as I understand, like the more you work in the university, like essentially like the more TVL you have, and if you work in university yes. less a time, like that's how it reduces, right? Like the 50% yes. and the 25% that you were saying. Yeah, yeah. So if it's a 50% contract, you're basically working 50% on the project that you are hired to work on as a PhD student. And then the other 50% depends on your professor or on your group. So you can be helping the professor with like, you know, the lab notes or basically like a teaching assistant in the courses, or you can be evaluating or setting the exams and like other academic duties. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes it's not just that and your professor basically just wants you to work on your phd and then you have free time so you can focus on yeah you can work like full-time research or something and for the tvl thing yeah so you started like step one you spend one year in step one then you go to step two you spend two years in step two so after each step your your kind of stipend increases um so far like you've been living in germany actually since you just said 2015 right yes so how is how do you feel like the life is uh, in Germany like if you compare it with India a bit? 
I mean, to be honest, I like it very much here. I mean, I like the work culture and the work-life balance and also like the exposure that you have to different kinds of people. So, so if you're coming here for PhD, you will definitely, uh, like I personally like it. So I like uh, the culture here. It's not very intrusive in a way. So people let you be. Mm -hmm. And if you need help, you can reach out to people and then they will help you out. And it's pretty nice to have a very good division of work life and private life. And, and I think overall, it's a very nice experience. So the, you, you are not working day and night unless you want to. Mm -hmm. And you have other things to focus on. And also your professors and the university and your friends also encourage you to explore new things. You know, uh, try out the different, like you can go to hiking, you can uh, get involved in different like, intercultural activities. So each university has its own uh, like program of, I think in Bonn, it's called something like student. Uh, yeah, I, I don't remember the name, but they have a lot of activities that you can uh, like take part in. So, so far I like it. There is obviously a different culture. Like back in India, we still have to, you know, like there is a culture, like we still have to refer to uh, like professors and teachers as sir and ma'am. Here that's not there. So that's like, yeah. It, it's much more relaxed and you can talk to your professor about everything. So, you know, if you have tr like trouble in understanding your concepts or if you just need some advice mm -hmm. or, or you need a help to find a new apartment. So like people are very friendly overall. Mm -hmm. Talk about some of the advices or some uh, tips that you mm -hmm. can give us, Hirsch, about like, you know, people who are thinking about coming for PhD programs in Germany. Mm -hmm. What should they what should they watch out for? What kind of things can go wrong that they should definitely keep in mind? So a typical duration of PhD, I think a lot of people are kind of still worried about it. Like how long does it exactly take? So it takes somewhere between three and five years. It can take more, but then like you have to align your expectations with your professor. So who, whoever is your supervisor, they will tell you like what do they need or what is the success criteria? Like how many publications or how much work do you need to like to have done so that you can write your thesis and defend you know like get your phd so you need to align that with your supervisor and basically like the the thing that you shouldn't do is if you are facing any trouble if you don't understand anything then you should not basically keep it to yourself reach out to people you know network a bit talk to your postdocs or, or make connections outside your university so if you are going to a conference, don't just go there and sit in a corner and then, you know, like not talk to anyone. Take that opportunity to talk to other people, other students, other professors, catch them in their coffee break. You know? And if you network, that helps a lot. That has helped me a lot because at times I was stuck. I was working on a particular problem where nobody from my group was working in. So I couldn't ask anybody for help because they did not understand the math, for example. So, mm -hmm. but I had come across and made connections with a bunch of senior researchers in different places who then I kind of developed a relationship over emails and then I could reach out to, to them and collaborate. And that really helped me out. So that, that gives you a direction and it gives you a bit more confidence that, you know, because it's easy to get lost. It's e like easy to get frustrated. So don't like, don't just sit alone. So that, that's what I would say. And overall, it's it's a nice experience. Uh, try to find a supervisor who is also, you know, like equally motivated as you. So if they are uh, uh, like happy to supervise and spend some time with you every week in basically uh, like reporting your progress and seeing how you are doing, that's great. Because if you have input from them, the faster you will grow. Otherwise, you will have to do things on your own, which is not bad but it's like the tough way and it will take some mental fortitude. But apart from that, it's, it's pretty nice because you work on very interesting projects. Uh, you write papers, you collaborate with other people who also work on fascinating stuff. You get the opportunity to go to conferences and your university pays for it. So, I mean, that's, that's nice. And you get to present your work in the international community. So I think that you cannot ask for more. And let's do it like this then, Harsh. Um, if any of the viewers, you still have any kind of questions whatsoever, you can put it in the comments below and we will keep an eye out on it. And like, maybe we are going to respond to your comments, like, you know, whenever some of them gather, respond to them. And so that you don't have any kind of like, you know, problems 
I will also like you know try to take out time and maybe Harsh whenever he finds time he can also like comment over it. Harsh, thank you so much for taking out the time. It was very nice catching up with you. Yeah, and um, yeah, I'll see you around then. Bye. Yep, you are. Bye bye.